This is a presentation of One Login Training. Welcome to configuring the Office 365 V2 App Connector. This is the first video in a series of four. There are several topics we'll be covering throughout this course. In this first video, we want to give you an overview of what it is we're going to be configuring. We need to understand what our end goal is before we start working out how to configure it all. Then we want to take a look at the various methods available when configuring Office 365, both for assigning users to Office 365 and for authenticating them. In the second video, we'll take a look at a list of things you need to have done or questions you need to answer before you get started. And then we'll add in that basic app connector. Our third video will be all about configuring provisioning. And finally, in our last video, we will configure single sign-on for our users. And since many of you all have users that are using the desktop versions of Office, we're going to talk about some configuration changes that might be necessary for your environment. So first, our overview. Our first goal is to enable provisioning. With provisioning enabled, a user can be automatically created in the target application, such as Office 365, whenever a user is added to the app connector, either manually or automatically through a role the user is assigned to. The big thing to understand in the Office 365 world is that Azure AD is always in the picture. Azure AD is the directory service for Office 365. So when we are creating users for Office 365, we're actually creating users in Azure AD. So for example, a new employee, Joey, joins the company. Mappings fire off automatically when the new user record is created in one login. And one of the mappings sees that Joey's email address contains the company's SMTP domain demo.com. The mapping then automatically assigns him to the Office 365 role. That Office 365 role is associated with the Office 365 v2 app connector. Thus, Joey is assigned to the Office 365 v2 app connector. With provisioning enabled, one login would then connect to Azure AD to make sure that Joey has a user account in Azure AD and that he is licensed for Office 365. If, say, Joey's attributes change, perhaps he's promoted to being a sales manager, then those updates will automatically be sent through to Azure AD. And finally, if Joey leaves the company, he will be disabled within one login and because provisioning is enabled, he will also be disabled within Azure AD and no longer be able to access Office 365. Once we have provisioning fully configured, our final goal is to configure an end user experience where they will log into the one login portal click on the app tile we have created for Office 365 and automatically get directed to and logged into Office 365. Now, let's take a look at all the options we have when configuring provisioning and single sign-on to Office 365. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, there are quite a few. Some are using pure Microsoft options which many of you most likely have currently configured for your environments and are planning on migrating away from to use one login. The other options include either all one login components to handle the provisioning and authentication or a combination of Microsoft and one login components. First, we need to define all the components that might or might not be involved in your configuration. And we'll start with the Microsoft ones. Office 365 is, of course, the most important component. That is ultimately the application we are trying to get users to access, to get their email, access calendaring, collaboration tools, and all the other fun stuff that Office 365 provides. 
Azure AD is Microsoft's IAM solution and as such is the user directory for Office 365. Azure AD controls how users get access to Office 365. ADDS, Active Directory Directory Services, is Microsoft's traditional directory service, usually runs on-prem and is usually referred to as just Active Directory or AD. Azure AD Connect is a tool that can be installed on a Microsoft system. It is used to synchronize users and their information between ADDS and Azure AD. And finally, ADFS, Act Directory Federation Services. This is a Microsoft service that can be enabled on Microsoft servers to provide users with the ability to log into applications outside of ADDS's control using their ADDS credentials. Now, on the one login side, we of course have the one login cloud directory. This is what users are logging into to access the portal and through which they're gonna access their applications. One login also has several connectors for Office 365. Many of them are used for connecting to various subcomponents of Office 365, like SharePoint. But there are three main connectors that are important to know about. The first one here is just the Office 365 app connector. It's the older option and it doesn't actually support provisioning and therefore really shouldn't be used. I'm only mentioning it here so you don't get confused and use it by mistake. The main connector that we want to use nowadays will be the one called Office 365 V2. This one provides provisioning and a secure single sign-on method. There's another one that we'll discuss later in this course, Office 365 V2 Licenses Only App Connector. This one provides the same secure single sign-on experience, but only provisions licenses, as the name suggests. And then we also have two directory connectors. The Active Directory Connector, ADC, synchronizes and authenticates users against ADDS, that on-prem-like version of Active Directory. And we have an Azure AD or Active Directory connector as well. This one purely synchronizes users from Azure AD into one login. So we're going to take a look at the four main options for configuring both provisioning and single sign-on for Office 365. The first three assume you have ADDS configured in your environment and you want to integrate it. So we're first going to look at the pure Microsoft solutions. Again, many of you most likely already have one of these options configured in your environment. Then we'll look at the components involved in a purely one login based solution. Next, we'll look at a combination approach where most of the provisioning is being handled by Microsoft tool and the rest is handled using one login. Finally, we'll see what the configuration would look like if you actually aren't using ADDS and are only using Azure AD. So first, a look at how provisioning and authentication are handled with purely Microsoft components. One option you might have configured in your environment is what Microsoft calls same sign-on. This solution uses Azure AD Connect to sync users between ADDS and Azure AD. Not only are their attributes such as name, department, and title synced, but their passwords are synced as well. So users are created in Azure AD, but they are automatically able to access Office 365 because this process does not automatically assign Office 365 licenses, unless they're part of a group that's been set up to indicate they should be automatically licensed. The main purpose of Azure AD Connect is to ensure that when users are created, updated, or deleted in ADDS, that those changes will be replicated to Azure AD 
meaning the users are provisioned into Azure AD. The configuration is called same sign-on because the user's passwords from ADDS are replicated into Azure AD. So when a user attempts to log in, they're able to use the same credentials they would use to log into their domain joined workstations. However, the authentic equation request is not actually going to ADDS. It's being handled by Azure AD, and it's Azure AD that allows them into Office 365. Thus, the distinction between same sign-on and single sign-on, where single sign-on is used to describe an offflow where they are, in fact, logging into ADDS. Again, remember with this setup, users are not automatically licensed for Office 365. The single sign-on setup using purely Microsoft tools involves adding ADFS into the picture. The provisioning or user sync process is set up exactly as it was before, except the user's passwords are not sent over to Azure AD. And remember, of course, users are not automatically licensed into Office 365. With single sign-on and ADFS, when a user attempts to log into Office 365, where they were manually assigned a license or assigned a license based upon a group they belong to, the user's login request is redirected from Azure AD to ADFS, and ADFS forwards the request to an ADDS domain controller. Assuming the user's credentials are correct, the successful auth message will be sent back to Azure AD and the user will be allowed in. And of course, don't forget, they wouldn't necessarily be automatically assigned that license in Office 365. So now, you've decided to bring one login into the mix. Long story short, one login can do the jobs of both Azure AD and ADFS. When it comes to provisioning, you can use OneLogin's ADC to synchronize users between ADDS and OneLogin. And then the OneLogin Office 365 v2 connector can push those users into Azure AD. And the extra special bonus is the Office 365 v2 app connector can automatically assign licenses to your users. Of course, once set up, whenever users are created, updated, or deleted in ADDS, those changes will be replicated all the way through to Azure AD. And with advanced directory configured, if users are created or changed within one login, the changes will be pushed into ADDS. The single sign-on flow uses the exact same components. When a user attempts to log in to the Office 365 portal, Azure AD redirects them to one login, which in turn authenticates the users against ADDS if they aren't already logged in. When the auth is confirmed, it sends the confirmation back to Azure AD, which allows the users in. Once you have federated a domain, which is what we have described here, then you can no longer create users in that domain directly within Azure AD. So you will have to rely on provisioning users from one login into Azure AD as we described in the previous slide. Now, sometimes folks want to keep Azure AD Connect around to handle the provisioning which means using both one login and Microsoft components. So Azure AD Connect stays in place. Doing its user sync thing, it's configured just as it would have been in a pure Microsoft single sign-on solution. The difference here is that instead of the main Office 365 v2 app connector, we would use the Office 365 v2 licenses only app connector. And since Azure AD Connect is handling most of the provisioning, 
we just need to make sure that users are assigned the appropriate Office 365 licenses. The single sign-on authentication flow works exactly as it does in a Pure One login setup. User wants to get into Office 365, they click on the portal. Officer 3D, Azure AD is going to redirect over to One Login, and One Login will authenticate them against ADDS. When successful, Azure AD is going to let them in. Again, remember. Once you have federated a domain like this, you can no longer create users directly in that federated domain within Azure AD. So you will have to rely, in this case, upon Azure AD Connect to create your users for you. The last option covers how to set up the flow if you don't have ADDS. The auth flow with Azure AD only is pretty simple. User wants to get an Office 365 portal, Azure AD authenticates them, and voila, they get in. With one login in the picture, the auth flow is what we saw previously with the one login single sign on configurations. Just no ADC involved because we're not using it. <laughs> Therefore, user tries to log in, Azure AD is going to redirect to one login. One login authenticates and Azure AD allows them in. For those who want to sync users that were in Azure AD with one login, there is a one login Azure AD directory connector. This connector is usually just used for the initial setup. It's going to pull users in from Azure AD and deposit them over into one login. Once the users are synced, you can disconnect the connector and manage the users from within one login. After the initial setup, the Azure AD connector really isn't needed anymore. So user provisioning and the authentication flow would be managed all through one login and that Office 365 v2 connector. This concludes part one of configuring the Office 365 v2 app connector. Please continue on to part two so you can review our pre-configuration checklist and add in the basic connector. This is a presentation of One Login Training.